Now we'll look at two examples of solving rational equations when all the fractions have the same denominator. In general, to solve a rational equation, we clear the fractions from the equation and then solve the resulting equation. However, there are two important things we need to be aware of. First, we need to identify any excluded values. The excluded values are any values for the variable that make the denominator equal to zero. We must exclude these values because division by zero is undefined. And then second, when we clear the fractions from the equation and solve the resulting equation, sometimes we get solutions from the resulting equation that don't actually solve the original equation. And these are called extraneous solutions. So when solving a rational equation, it is important that we always verify the solutions satisfy the original equation. Looking at this first equation, notice how both denominators are x minus three. Notice if x equals positive three, both denominators would be zero and we'd have division by zero. And therefore, for the first equation, x equals three is an excluded value. So at the bottom of the screen, we'll list three as an excluded value. And sometimes we just say x can't equal three. The next step is to clear the fractions from the equation and solve the resulting equation. In this case, though, notice how because both denominators are the same, we can clear the fractions from the equation by setting the numerators equal to each other. So because the numbers are the same, if these fractions are equal, then four x minus five must equal 23. And this should make sense because if I gave you a simple equation like x divided by five equals three fifths, we know in this equation x is equal to positive three by setting the numerators equal to each other because the denominators are the same. So now we'll go ahead and solve this resulting equation. So for the next step, we'll add five to both sides. Simplifying, negative five plus five is zero, so we have four x equals 28. Solve for x, we divide both sides by four. Simplifying, we have x equals seven. So first notice how x equals seven is not an excluded value. So to verify x equals seven is our solution, we'll substitute seven back into the original equation. Substituting seven for x, we'd have the quantity four times seven minus five divided by the quantity seven minus three equals 23 divided by the quantity seven minus three. So here we have four times seven, which is 28. 28 minus five is equal to 23. So 23 divided by seven minus three is equal to four. So we have 23 fourths on the left side on the right side, the numerator is 23. The denominator is also four. 23 fourths equals 23 fourths is true, verifying our solution is x equals seven. Let's look at the second example. We begin by identifying the excluded values. Looking at just the denominators, notice how the denominators are equal to zero when x equals six, and therefore six is an excluded value. Once again, because the denominators are the same, these fractions are equal to each other only when the numerators are equal to each other, which means the solutions to this equation are when 36 equals x squared. Notice here we have a quadratic equation, so let's set it equal to zero and see if we can factor. So let's subtract 36 on both sides of the equation. On the left side we have zero, on the right side we have x squared, minus 36. Well, x squared minus 36 is a difference of squares, so it does factor into two binomials. We have zero equals, one binomial factor is x plus six, and the other is x minus six. So using the zero product property, the product on the right is equal to zero when x plus six equals zero, or when x minus six equals zero. Solving for x here, we subtract six on both sides and have x equals negative six, or on the right side, adding six to both sides, we get x equals positive six. The next step is to verify these solutions do satisfy the equation. Notice x equals six is an excluded value, so it will not satisfy the equation, but we will verify this by performing substitution. Let's first check x equals negative six. So we would have 36, divided by the quantity negative six minus six equals 
the square of negative six divided by the quantity negative six minus six. So here we have 36 divided by negative 12 equals, the square of negative six is positive 36. So we have 36 divided by negative 12. Notice both quotients are the same and they both equal negative three, which verifies x equals negative six is a solution. And now let's substitute six for x. We'd have 36 divided by the quantity six minus six equals the square of six divided by six minus six. We'll notice in both fractions we have division by zero, which is undefined. And therefore x equals six is not a solution, but because it appeared as a solution when we solved the resulting equation after clearing the fractions, we can say that six is an extraneous solution as well as an excluded value. Either way, this equation only has one solution. The solution is x equals negative six. I hope you found this helpful.